Welcome to How to Stencil Like a Pro. So we've got some different applicators. We'll just jump right on in. There's so many things I want to share with you. We've got different applicators. We've got sponges. Um, you've got rollers. You've got big, long, bristled scumblers. You've got short, domed ones. This one's a little bit looser. These two are very similar. This one is a very tight dome. You've got little sponge applicators, fingertip daubers, ink sweepers, all of these things will all apply paint to your sponge, to your um, project. The very first thing you want to do to get started is you want to get your stencil a little sticky. We use Tack It Over and Over. This is actually made for fabric, but it acts like a great big giant post-it note when you're done. So this is a stencil that I obviously love and use a lot. And it's very sticky, okay? And it doesn't have any residue, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and show you how to make a stencil sticky. I'm going to use this snowflake stencil and put some tacket over here. And then I'm just going to use the jumbo dauber. You don't want to brush this because it would get into all the cracks and crevices and things like that, and it's just not cool. So I'm just going to tap it on there lightly. If you want it heavier and stickier, then you put a heavier application. It dries clear, so once it's dry, um, you won't be able to see it anymore and it won't be sticky. If you get it on your hands, you can take it off, um, you can remove it with um, olive oil or like a, an oil and that will remove the stickiness. It's very difficult to remove. It doesn't remove off your stencils very easily either, so you do want to make sure that you're putting it where you want it. <clears throat> and it, But it doesn't, it does refresh as far as like if you wash it, it will stay sticky even after you've washed your stencil. So it, it's a good product, but it's good to know what its limitations are. Now I always pick this up and move it to dry someplace else because it can sometimes stick to my wax paper. All right, once you have your stencil sticky, you can take vellum, and you don't want them to stick together in a great big pile, so you just stick them onto the, whoops, I got this one sticky on both sides because I needed it reversed. So I can stick this on vellum and then it will easily peel off without over sticking. If you have very delicate stencils, you want to be careful. You might want to skip the tacket step if you have very, very, very sensitive stencils. Um, super thin bridges and things like that. If you don't want to um, use the tacket, then what you can do is you can tape your um, stencil on and you can tape in between, don't forget that. So you can tape right here in the middle and then move your tape when you're ready to do something different. Okay, so you can tape. The other thing that's interesting about tape is say I don't care for that scroll right there, I just don't need it in my design. I can take little bits of tape, a little bit different than that, probably cutting them is much better. I can take bits of paint, uh, tape, and I can just go ahead and mask that area that I don't desire to be on my stencil and then it just won't bother me at all. And I can remove the tape, and then I have a totally and completely different stencil look. Okay, um, the other thing you can use the vellum sheets for is you can put them through your printer for um, your pattern facings. Okay, so let's talk about different applications of paint. There's a couple ways that you can um, do different things with your paint. I'm going to show you um, the different techniques as far as the different looks of the ap applicators. Stick that down. I'm going to use some brown. Okay, and I'm totally going to do the very first step. I need a paper towel. The very first thing I'm going to do is show you what a very, very fine application looks like. You need paper towels to blot with. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to just use my very tight brush and I'm going to rub, 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 rub almost all of it off. And I'll come over here and I'll just do this little guy right here. With I'm just using, notice I'm using kind of swirling pressure. Okay, now I can, I can lift this up and I can peek. See how very faint that is? And that's a really soft and elegant type of look. Okay, so I can just go ahead and reload as I need to. So pressure is one way that you, by using just soft dusting pressure. Now what if I take the same brush and I brush stuff off and now I'm going to go on and I'm going to pounce. And you'll notice already, you can see it through the stencil, that I'm getting a much 
heavier but finer because I'm using this tight um, brush. So these are kind of Stencil Basics 101 here. Okay, now what I can also do, and I'll come on one side of this, is I could do one coat, and maybe I've decided I want it really solid. I can go back and I can do a second coat. If you're doing a light color over a dark color, you really want to remember that. You might want to leave your stencil in place and then remove it after you've got your second coat on. So let's take a look at the differences. Same brush, totally different look and appearance. Notice that we have very clean lines. The reason you want adhesive on it is to get that really clean line. Okay, now I'm going to switch to something that's a heavier brush. And we'll use these bigger scrolls. This little guy looks like he's missing a little bit of his... Um, is glue down there. Okay, so I'm just going to pounce this off over here, and I'm going to always pounce over here on my paper towel. See how much paint I have there? They call this offloading. Okay, so I just want to offload the, the excess paint. Now I'm going to come on here, and I'm just going to let that openness dictate what I'm doing. Okay, now we'll take a peek. So once again, a completely and utterly different look. And this stencil, I've broken my bridge right there. These guys right here are going to give you very similar effects, but they're going to cover further. And I'd like to show you the anatomy of this brush is that they're all domed. They make flat stencil brushes, but I, I honestly I don't care for them because they don't get into the meat of the, the material, and you end up with something that's just hitting flat and nothing that is actually going piercing into and it's what these dome ones do okay so but we can take our fingertip dauber and we're going to offload over here and we're going to come over here and we're just going to pounce what I like about this is you get really close your fingertip away now if I wanted this this scroll a different color than that scroll and I'm throwing a lot of things at you at one time but they're really close elements together, I can just go in and just mask it with a little bit of my tape, and then this is the effect that we get from that. Okay, so see that's very tight. It's very similar in, in style to this down here, um, but it's even more base coated. This ap applicator is going to do basically the same thing, and so is this. This is what I would use for very small details. Let's see, I've got an example around here someplace. here. Okay, so say I wanted to do um, this border detail, this jewel border. I want very fine areas. I don't want to be covering like blom 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 and there's a detail in here that I wanted to skip. So I would use a fingertip dauber or a small brush in this case. Okay, next let's go in with our sea sponge. I'm going to go in over here and I'm going to get it all over my sponge. And then let's go up here and see what happens when we just do some fuzzy, soft, sea spongy stuff. Okay, I'll peel this off. Okay, so see how you get just a really kind of an elegant, almost tone-on-tone um, -tone look. Over here we've got something that's a little bit dreamy and fuzzy. These two are very clear. This shows the texture of the bristles. So you can totally manipulate what you're doing by what you are applying it with. So do remember, if you're in a class and somebody else has got this kind of look and you don't, you, you know what to do about it. Now let's address this little bits of green paint right here. Okay, you've got to clean a stencil, right? Obviously, because if you use it and you've got paint that's dry that is going to come off on your piece, then that's not good. So in this case, I've probably just about worn this poor guy out. Um, what you would do is you're going to take your stencil to the sink and you're going to lay it flat onto like a cookie sheet or some other flat cutting board type thing. You can let it soak for a moment in um, like hot soapy water or whatever and use a soft scrubbing brush, okay, and you'll loosen all the bits and they'll come off. When it dries, your tacket will be tacky again, okay. Now in this case, I've got tack it over paint over whatever so before you apply tack it to the back side you would want to go ahead and clean your stencil or buy two so that you can have a mirror image of your popular stencils 
that is a, another really good solution. Okay, so let's talk about other stuff. Okay, one of the fastest, fastest, fastest ways to get paint on a stencil is to roll it. Okay, I'm going to show you also what tone will do. So I'm going to use a little dense foam black um, foam roller. I'm going to load it and then make sure that it's evenly loaded over here. And then I'm going to offload. Okay, you're always going to offload and I'm going to get you so you can see on camera. Okay, and I'm doing just gentle pressure. I want these strong bits gone. Okay, so now I'm, I'm even. Now I can do this a couple of ways. I can push heavy, I can do light. You want something medium, but depends on the look you want. So I can go like that and just roll with even pressure. Or I can go here and I can go with heavy pressure. Now you've got to be aware that you can bleed. Okay, you don't want to bleed. You can also stipple if you need to get into a spot. But let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so you can see I got a little bit of heavy and congestion over here. So the trick is if you want a good medium coverage, very medium pressure, no press down. Press down squishes it under the stencil and you'll end up making a mess. Look at how pretty though, when we look at this color versus this color, look at how amazing that looks because it is just so soft. You know, it is tone on tone is a very delicate look. You can really do stuff in the backgrounds and it makes your, your um, painting look deeper and deeper. Over here, this is more of a design element. Okay, and so then we go, all right, so we've got our contrast. When you're using your contrast, make sure that, um, make sure that you think about what you're doing and make it intentional. I think if we paint a little bit more intentionally, then you can alter um, the look of things rather nicely. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you would use glitter in a, with a stencil. I'm going to take my stencil. I'm going to use a dome brush. I'm going to offload. And I'm going to just do blue on here. Most of the time, if you're going to glitter in a color, you want to give it a base coat before you do the glittering. And the reason for that is, um, and let's do a contrast. Let's go ahead over here and let's do soft taps. And then I'll do these without any paint on them at all. Okay, let's take a peek. Okay, see what the difference is in the, the coverage. All right, now we're going to go into medium glitter glue is awesome for making glitter stick. You know how some kind, sometimes glitter just doesn't stick? So you need a glue that has been formulated to hang on. And that's what this stuff does. I'll just wipe my brush out and I'll go into the glue. I'll offload over here. And I'm going to have to work in sections. So I'm going to get this done. We all know, whoops, I don't even have nearly enough glue out. It's sucked into my brush here. I don't think that's still going to be enough. Okay, so we'll get that done. Okay, and then we'll sprinkle. Just get the glitter on there. Now this will wash off because you'll wash that glue off. You want to do it quicker. You know, be aware of what you're doing here. Okay, so put that on there and then we'll go into just our glue. Offload. And then we'll go into a clear glitter, which I didn't get out. And we'll sprinkle that. Okay, now we'll dust this off. In this case, because I've got two glitters out, it has to go on the trash can. Okay, 
and then I'll go ahead and peel my stencil up. Okay, look at how gorgeous that is. Okay, so notice how crispy the edges are. They are just crisp, crisp, crisp. Okay, that's because we have the sticky down. Notice how the color, and I, I really should have put the blue maybe over here with just glue so you could see what the difference is, but I think it's always safest to say, yes, I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little light coloring underneath. Always get your brushes in water right away. Okay, this is an example that I did using just um, a stencil. You can imagine that you could use this as any kind of border for something. Um, it just is raised just a little bit. Um, this one I did with texture glass, which I'll show you next. Okay, before I show you the, let's get you zoomed out just a little bit. Before I show you the um, texture glass, I want to show you an example. This is a glitter. This is witch parking only. Um, and this has been painted black through a stencil. And then down here, I actually base coated um, the letters and then applied the glitter. So I base coated in a graduated color and applied the glitter in a graduated um, color. Texture glass is next, and this is another example of texture glass. So what I've got over here, right here, is, I, can you see it shining? It's also slightly raised. Um, what I've got is just one color with texture glass on top. And in this case, I've got texture glass, which gives me the texture, and then I've got, um, and then I've sprinkled that with glitter. Okay, texture glass comes the consistency of like um, like a face cream. It's really got a nice, a nice look to it. We're gonna put a little bit out on our palette. You can tint it. It's flexible when it dries. It is not waterproof, so you don't wanna use it like on a floor cloth because it won't withstand like washing and stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna use a palette knife, and this palette knife is really grubby. So I'm gonna to switch to using this um, handy scraper. And we're just going to do one, one of these. So we're going to come over the top and we're going to scrape on our texture. Scrape it nice and even, or you can leave it a little bit chunky, whichever you prefer. And then you're going to remove it. Okay, and then what you've got, if I can figure out a way to show you, is you've got something that has a little bit... I don't know if you can see it. Dimensionally, it's absolutely dimensional. When we're thinking about our painted projects, remember that getting some lift, and you can actually leave your stencil on there. Let's, let's do that one. Let's, I'm not going to be able to put it back on the same spot, but I will go over here. Let's scooch some stuff out of the way. Okay, let's press that down. So, you can actually scoop this Hello, it's not scooping very well. Yuck. And you can lay it on really thick. Okay. And get a really, really thick coat. Notice I'm not scraping it out. Okay, so that's nice and thick. That's way, 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 way more than I used before. Okay, and then what you'll do is you'll lift get anchored and then you'll just lift straight up and then you have a super duper duper um, amount of like that stuff is like a cookie okay I don't know can you see it uh, well you'll have to take my word for it this one is kind of nice and just like a little texture this one is absolutely very very raised so by lifting the stencil straight up it becomes almost like a cutting tool lifting up this will dry um, perfectly crystal clear, and then um, it will show, so what's neat about it is it will show um, whatever colors in the background, but it will just be a layer of dimension and um, shininess. And what I was going to tell you is you can, with either a matte varnish or a, a gloss varnish, this is a matte surface, I can go onto my stencil and I can totally just do it with only varnish. And then that will leave the texture of the stencil in the background without there really being anything happening, like no color change. Now one of the banners that I've done has used a little bit of a kind of a fade technique. 
Okay, so I've got chicken wire around the edge, but notice that when you're looking at the art, okay, normally when you're looking at art, what you want to see is you want to see the middle first, and you want this border to keep your eye in. Well, I felt if I did a stencil all the way inside, it would add way too much busyness. So by having it darker and fading in, then it looks and acts a little bit like a frame. Okay, so that is a technique that you can use stencils for. Instead of just maybe antiquing the edge, you add the story. I think the chicken wire absolutely adds to the story, and it acts as the frame as well. So it's a design element as well as um, being part of the, our story. Okay, and you can achieve that look um, very easily in a couple of ways. I'm going to use a dome brush that I believe has been left to dry. I'm going to offload over here. Now I'm going to start where my paint's going to be heaviest. I'm just going to stipple. Stipple my edge. Here I go. And I'm going to get all that heavy paint off. Now I'm going to start walking. And notice, listen to the sound. Notice how it's softer. But I'm walking out, I'm walking out, and then as I get out here, I'm just sneaking up on it very, very lightly. So we got all of our heavy paint off when we very first started. You gotta make sure you do enough of it to be able to see what your story is. So I'm doing like one plus a little bit rows. Now let's take a peek and see how that fades in. You can't tell where it kind of ends or it begins. It's kind of cool. But now let's go into, I'm gonna take that paint, I'm gonna bring my story out just a little bit. So I'm gonna come out here, bring it a little bit deeper, give myself a little bit of room so you can tell that I faded. Okay, and now I'm going to bring it out and fade. What we can also do is we can fade with some color. So now I'm going to go into a dark color. And do it one more time because I've got the blend. Okay, and now I'm going to come over here. And only I'm going to do this, but I'm going to also fade it. Now I'll start walking in, sneaking up on it. You don't want sudden stops and starts. Okay, so see how that made it even deeper. Just increases the intensity of the stenciling that you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to use a two-part stencil. And you can see that I've gotten paper at some point or something stuck to the back of my stencil. Be careful with how you store your stencils. Um, treat, them, treat them nicely. I'm gonna show you two-part, but I'll show you what they do. Two part gives you the details of your piece, and so what I've got here is a bunch of butterflies. We've got, oh, four or more butterfly stencils, probably six or so now. But you'll see that what I've done is I've shaded and base coated all in one step, and then the second part of the stencil puts my black detailing on. And so what you get, and then you can go in and do some accenting and stuff like that. With stencils, if you need to connect your dots, all you have to do is go back with a liner brush and, and connect things. So we're gonna take three colors of paint that I barely have, and I'm going to apply our base coat shade highlight. If you're doing, oh, projects where, um, like I'm gonna do this at a church on a wall, so a real super fast way to get super great detail without base coating while you're at the wall. Um, wall's going to be interesting. I'm going to use the fingertip dauber for the initial base coat. And I want to use my lightest color first. We'll offload over there. Okay, we'll come over here. Just going to get that color on there. Boy, you know what? I think I will base coat undercoat with bleach sand every time for yellow. That is a perfect, look how great that's covering. I've never seen yellow cover that good. Okay, so we'll just come over here, get that kind of, I don't care about the outside because that's where we're going to put some brush shading. While it's wet, we're going to go into our next deeper color, which is saffron. And we're going to work sac saffron in from the outside, working our way in. And notice how I'm doing the same thing. If I want it darker there, I'm going to walk towards, and then I'll do less and less pressure for blending. And softer, softer, softer. Sneak up on it. All the way down. Okay, and then 
I'll blot that out, pick up the traditional burnt sienna, and now I'll come over here, and I'll just do all along my little edge. And this is the bigger area, so I want it to have bigger, dark. I blot it a little bit, and now I'll blend that really softly, moving quickly while everything's wet. Okay, now maybe I feel like I've got a little bit of a sudden line. I'll step back a step into the saffron. I'm neutralizing the paint, and now I'll walk right up the middle there with the saffron and do that blending. Okay, and I'll repeat on the other side. All right, so this is what I have. I've got my fade. I'll lift that up. Nice, crisp, awesome edges. And now we'll go over the butterfly. Line up our edges. Yeah. I totally don't think I have the right butterfly overlay for the butterfly that I have here. Yeah, it's got to be right. start there. I think I've got the wrong butterfly overlay. I have a mistaken butterfly. I think right when we did these fresh, I think this one was the one that had been messed up or something. Check your butterfly and let us know. Okay, so then we're just going to go with black. Even if it's the wrong one, it should give you the right effect. And then you have a dressed up butterfly. Super simple way to get two layers of things done without having a whole bunch of detail. To connect lines when you are, let's see, to connect your lines, you're going to use a round or a liner brush. And I'll just make my round be a chisel. And you would just simply, if you wanted this to connect to that, then you just connect the line. Okay, um, I'm trying to see. Butterflies are different because they are supposed to be all choppy. Um, but sometimes you have bridges, and you know what I'm talking about, where you have to connect one thing to the other. You connect your bridges with just simply using a round or a liner brush. Okay, I checked with our um, downtown about our stencil. And this one was Butterfly Anne. And right when it came out, we had this as just kind of random butterflies. You could use this separately or this separately or whatever. So this is not supposed to fit that, so it's not really broken, it's just more of a different stencil. But um, if you do happen to have this one and um, you want them to line up, we've got a new one that has replaced this one. So um, if you do happen to have that. But you can use the pieces separately, but I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, this project is an example of using a tone-on-tone -tone stencil color. So this is just another application thing, uh, not application, but it's a matter of deciding on color. We've got brown in the background, we put a brown on top, we antique our edges, and just the whole thing looks a little bit like it's fabric. But connected to this same stencil is a different technique that you can use. I can't show you this one because I'm, um, I don't have the equipment right here. But this one is the one where I took the same exact stencil Okay, we'll get it all untwisted here. Okay, and I've got it on fabric. Okay, let's go here so you can see. Now the way you apply this is you apply it with an iron. This is ink effects, so once again, when you change your medium, then it's going to change the look of everything that you do. You take ink effects, and I actually stenciled, oops, I, stenc I stenciled it into onto paper. That's what you do with ink effects. You paint on the paper. You can base coat, you can line, you can highlight, you can shade, you can do whatever you want on paper. Okay, then you take your paper and you reverse it down on wood or paint or fabric or whatever you want to do and you press it. And I actually, this is the first press, okay, then I'm assuming this is the second but it looks like this one is. So you can keep pressing it and it will just get a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. Or you can lay the stencil right back down over the top, refresh it if you've used a stencil, and you can do your um, press 
separately or you can connect them here so if I have an all over stencil I can do it put it down lay the stencil back over refresh it put it down okay so that's another really unique application for um, stencils is to use them on your fabric all right another application that's completely and going off into another while we're talking about fabric and alternate mediums you can totally stencil on glass they make these awesome stencils that are completely and utterly flexible so you can use them on wine glasses you can stencil in around around items they're self sticky and they're removable like they they're reusable over and over again Okay, so you can use these on fabric, you can use them on anything that you'd like. What we're going to do is we're going to show you that you can use etching material. Okay, so I'll take a little bit of my rubbing alcohol. I'll wipe that off, clean off any fingerprint type stuff, dry it off. I'm going to take out some of my etching material. This is etch all and this is extremely safe. Um, etching material. Even kids can do it. It's very, very user friendly. You can reuse it and dump it right back into the container. Okay, so I'll just pour a little bit out. I don't need very much because I'm just going to show you a little thing. <clears throat> okay, and then I'll put my stencil on the piece. And I want it straight, so I'm going to take just a second to get it on there straight. This is something that I actually will keep instead of just a piece of cardboard. Okay, and then we'll go through and we'll get all the edges all pressed down. And I'll fuss with that. Okay, then you want to go through and you want to make sure that you are pressed down. So you take something that's hard, a piece of like a credit card, it would be ideal. Okay, and I'll do that. Ah, here's my scraper. That's what I was looking for. Get our bubbles out. Okay, now one thing that I have noticed about the etching is if you're too close to the area, to the edge, the gas will almost etch. So I'm going to go ahead and tape where it gets really close to the edge of my glass. You get a little bit of clouding, and that's just something that I noticed. So, just keep it away. Eh, maybe I'll go ahead and shoot one on each side of the... It's pretty close, and I'm pretty messy. Pretty darn messy. Okay, so get that on there like that. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the squeegee, the little scraper. And we're going to lay this on there a nice healthy amount. It's reusable, so you don't have to worry about, um, and you want it to go on there quickly and evenly. You don't want to worry about, um, if you put it on kind of casually, then things won't get done evenly. Okay, now we let this sit someplace for 15 minutes, and then we'll rinse it off with cold water, and you'll have permanent glass etching. As we're waiting for that all to dry, to show you they make like a million of these stencils you can also stencil on things like terracotta pots um, and stuff like that you can add initials they've just got a ton of different titles um, of these stencils and I love that they're flexible you just stick them back on here when you're done and you can make long bands it's very neat okay now we've got an example of this product called magic mesh okay now this product do you see all these little squares all you simply do is you do this and you apply with a scumbly brush. Just a little bit here and there. You can put greens in green areas, you know, purples and black areas. You can do tans and tan areas. Just rub on a little bit. You've offloaded. And you can make a really interesting effect by using just something as simple. And you can use any stencil to do the same thing. If I wanted to take my scrolls back here in the background, I could lay the scrolls on add just a little bit of detailing and then I'd have soft purple scrolls going on in my background. So this tone on tone thing is very very important and you know what I love about this is I took the same stencil or the, I, this is my stencil, I took that same stencil and I unified the design by going through and treating everything. Everything got highlighted with the checks. 
Okay, so um, it, that's another really unique way of getting um, a unifying effect on your project. Okay, this project is just straight up crafting. Okay, you can just absolutely craft with this. Card making, scrapbooking, any of that kind of stuff. We've got some glitters mixed in. We've got um, just stencils just glommed together. We've got some diamonds in the background. Um, you know, we've just got you know, checks, background bats. You can totally layer your stencils to create all kinds of fun, um, fun looks and techniques. So remember, just flat out crafting is okay too. All right, we're going to show the next thing is this one is a couple of the techniques that we've already talked about. So what we've got here is we've got a tone on tone that fades. Okay, so see how we're darker at the bottom? And then we fade up. Okay, so we'd use a larger brush to apply that. We've got our stencil of our town. And then we're going to use our snowflakes, but see how that one's a whoops, I get you on camera. See how that one's just a different color? Notice how this one's lighter. Notice how this one sits back and this one comes forward. We could have glittered these snowflakes if we wanted to. And then we've got a straight out. This is also a contrast. Straight out. I didn't even connect my bridging on here. Just stenciled it straight on. Um, just a totally cute application for um, just a quick and easy project. You can um, really make your stencils work for you when you want to get some um, a seasonal project done. Okay, this one is Believe in the Magic, and this one I did very much the same thing. I've got very faded, very just softly brushed with that light, light pressure, a little bit heavier, and then heavier still with some stippling straight up and down for crispness. Okay, notice that I get very fady when I'm doing that little soft rub there. And then over here on our border, I'll flip you around. This is a tone on tone. This is me doing an all over stencil. It's this scroll, but you can't hardly see what's happening in the background. So between my snowflakes that are different levels of intensity, the scroll, a little bit of antiquing, this has got a depth that is um, really hard to, believe, hard to beat. And then the final one that I want to show is, I gotta show you the, um, this one is, actually this one is not what I thought it was. Um, it does have texture crackle on it, but it didn't go through a stencil. Ah, I remember, this one has a screen. Okay, so this one is, um, I have a couple more things to show you actually. I don't know if you can see it back here in the background, but what I've done is instead of stippling, I had a plain background, okay? Laid my screen, a screen is the reverse of a stencil, and I think, did I bring one here? Yeah. Okay, so you just simply lay this down. You can stipple over the top. You could sticky the back. These are, tend to be a little bit more delicate, but boy, can you see this effect in reverse on the, on the edges of things. I love how this looks. Okay, this one was the exact same thing. It was a screen that I laid down, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, and then just spritzed on top of. Okay, and then this one is also a stencil. It would have been really cool, actually, if I had done this just slightly raised or in the texture crackle. But then I embellished alongside. Do you see how I've just given it a little bit of a dark line? You can stencil and then embellish as well. Don't forget, you can always embellish whatever you've stenciled on and make it a little bit deeper. Okay, so I'm just going to take and squirt. I'm going to move our projects here. This is a Mist It. Okay, and is that enough? To, yeah, I think it's probably plenty. What I like about this is it jet propels without jet propelling anything. Look at how cool that is. Isn't that neat? So totally tone on tone. I'm showing you this dark so that you get the idea, but pretend like you had a blue in the background or some kind of you know snowy thing, and or better still, a white, and then you did this with a little bit of blue misting, and you would have the white behind, and that would look like your snow was swirling and everything like that. Very, very cool. The next product is called Texture Crackle. Okay, you can push any medium through a stencil. I hope that's what you're getting from this. This is a product that you're going to mix with paint. You could also not mix it, and it will crack. You don't want to mix it more than like 30% paint. So you can tint it. Okay, 
once you get it the color you want. Then I got, let's see, I've got some sticky on this little star guy right here. You can make it thick or thin. So back to the same thing like the texture glass. Either thick or thin is fine. Smooth it out. Wipe off your mess. And there you got a lovely raised star that's going to crack when it dries. Okay, one of the things that you can do once you've um, done your, if I can find some water, it's like a dry bed of water here. Once you've got your texture glass dry, you can actually antique with it. And so you can actually go over the top, wipe that out, and then you can antique and leave a residual, um, a relief of your piece. So if you can see oops, that we have just a little bit, maybe we could do it a little heavier. Okay, we we'll go a little bit darker color. There you go. So you see how you have just a relief type effect. So you can actually create some aged antiqued on walls, not with snowflakes obviously, but with other things on walls. That would be great. I'm going to go wash the, um, the stencil medium off my stencil. I think it's been 15 minutes. Um, I might be jumping the gun just a little bit. The way that you do this is you simply scrape the material back into your jar. So you scrape it off, scrape it right back in, and then you just go do everything under running water. The water needs to be running. If it's not running, then what will happen is you'll get some of the medium will come over here and it will etch your, um, your other parts of your glass. Okay, so let me go get that rinsed. Okay, so my etching turned out absolutely perfectly, um, of course, right? And so what's neat about this is this is permanent etching. This is not just etching paint. This is actual permanent etching. My stencil is re-stickified. It doesn't ever lose its sticky. It's not actually um, stuff on there. It's actually the kind of material it's made out of. So I could just go around and do all kinds of stuff. I love doing these little like lunch dishes like this because you never not know who yours are. You know what I mean? Like you know that that's your lunch dish and then you don't get it confused with other people's. So from fabric to um, fabric to paper to um, projects, craft painting, um, I hope that you've learned a lot because there's a lot to know about stenciling. Stenciling is such a great technique.